What's up, nerds? We are your hosts. I am Chad. I'm Jake. This week we are sponsored by Cry Baby Craigs. We are also sponsored by Raise Energy Drinks. This week we are talking about Shang-Chi. And then later in the episode, we are also joined by Ken Knudsen, a comic book writer, illustrator, uh, who is promoting his new Kickstarter for his uh, hilariously dark and witty. Uh, my monkey's name is Jennifer. So yeah, let's get into it. Let's just dive right into it. Uh, this is the All Things Nerd Podcast. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the All Things Nerd podcast, your weekly dive into all things nerd. Wow. Wow, Jake. Wow. Uh, Speaking of Jake, uh, how was your week? My week's been good. Uh, Crazy busy at work. Um, But, you know, we had, uh, we interviewed Ken, and I thought that was a lot of fun. Other than that, it's been pretty chill. Yeah. I got my butt kicked in bowling by my girlfriend. Three games in a row, she killed it. Well, based on the scores you sent me, you held your own for the first game. First two, I did okay. Yeah, she started to definitely pull ahead in the second game, and then the third game, she just wiped the floor with you. Uh, no offense. Oh, no, none taken. I actually thought it was pretty hot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she takes it so seriously. So like, hot right now. There's like those little dots on the floor, and she like... Lines herself up with the dots and does like a little slide of her foot, does the whole, and then she even, but then she even made me better, like because she was like, I just kept fucking chucking the ball at the ground and I'm like, <laughs> knock some shit down, and she's like, hey dude, when you fucking, she didn't say dude, but she's like, you know, hey babe, hey guy, hey hey boyfriend, uh, she's like, come follow follow through all the way up, and uh, and I did it and I. My this is gonna sound pathetic to a lot of people who actually bowl, but I bowled after she told me that uh, one twelve, which is my personal best. So <laughs> yeah, no, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, though. she killed me. Yeah. How about you? How was your week? And uh, weekend. We- Double yeah. weekend. Labor Day weekend. How was your Labor Day weekend? Uh, it was. It was good. Um, I mean, yeah, we we interviewed. Ken, you guys will get a chance to hear that later in this episode. Um, I woke up on Saturday, could not taste anything, and was short of breath. So I was a little freaked about, you know, the COVID. Um, Went and got that checked out, came back negative. So then I was able to go and get uh, my vaccine, which is pretty rad. Uh, Other than that, yeah, it's been a really chill week i've just been hanging out at home not doing much hanging out with the dog uh you between you and ken you guys finally broke me down to uh start watching smallville fuck allison mac yeah other than that the show is really good oh if there's one actress that i hate more than amber heard it's her yeah uh they could probably just go scissor each other into hell for all i care wow that got graphic, but accurate. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, the, the show's been really enjoyable so far. I got through the first season because I had nothing to do. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. other if than that, it's been you, a lot of fun. If you decide to ever take up Smallville, watching it, just you guys got to power through the first season. It's The first season's like, it's okay, but it gets way better after that. Just yeah. stick with it. I'm going to. I'm I'm going yeah. to. <laughs> Other than that, I mean, anything, anything of noteworthy to talk about before we uh, get into this? Other than, I mean, we do probably, need to talk about the live stream. I was gonna say probably our live stream coming up on the twenty. Yeah, the the twenty second. Yeah, <laughs> the twenty second. Wow. <laughs> I don't wow. have a fucking calendar in front of me. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, September twenty second will be our next yeah. uh, live stream. Uh, we've, yeah. uh, we're still figuring out exactly what we're going to do, but we have, uh, a little, we have upped the ante for, 
uh, giveaways from our sponsor, Crybaby Craig's. Mm -hmm. uh, they've agreed to, you know, to have just like a bottle at a time. We're going to start giving away a little bit more than that. Yeah, you get a sample pack, which is going to be so fucking rad. Yeah, yeah. We should probably look into getting flowed a couple of those sample packs <laughs> for ourselves. <laughs> right, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. But yeah, <laughs> so you guys are going to get three bottles of hot sauce. Um, and we're also, obviously, now we have the the new web store up, which is going to be like way better shit than what we were uh, previously giving. Uh, not that our shirts that we were giving were bad but now there's just way more inventory to choose yeah, from. there's more variety <clears throat> so we're going to be giving away a ton of cool shit uh our sponsor is going to give you be giving you guys a bunch of tool tool shit yeah cool tool shit. shit jesus christ uh it's gonna be fun i'm excited yeah. about it please tune in yeah but other than that yeah uh so yeah jake before uh we get into talking about uh shang chi uh, introduce our, our first sponsor. Yeah, uh, so our first sponsor is Cry Baby Craig's Hot Sauce. It's a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce. It goes on practically anything. Listen up and we will tell you a little more about it. Hey you nerds, do you love spice? Supporting small businesses? What about enhancing the flavor of your favorite foods? If you said yes to any of those, our good friends over at Crybaby Craig's have the perfect solution for you. Crybaby Craig's is a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes perfectly with your favorite foods, adding the perfect amount of spice and enhancing the flavor of everything it touches. Started in Minneapolis by Craig back in 2012, Crybaby Craig's has become a Minneapolis and Minnesota staple in the sauce world. So head over to crybabycraigs.com and order yours today. All right, guys. So we are going to dive into... Oh, first of all, giant, giant spoiler alert. If you have not seen this movie, uh, you know, stop listening. But we're going to dive into Shang-Chi. Um, oh, Sean. Shang-Chi. Sean. Shang-Chi. Yeah. Like S-H-A-W-N-Chi. Okay. No? Yeah. I think it's S H A N G. <laughs> That's Shang. S, C A. Oh, I did put a C in there. Wow! Wow! <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> this is kind of a bit. That we'll we'll get into it. Anyways, later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, we're gonna get into Shang Chi. I put a G on it that time. Shang Chi. Uh, if you haven't seen it, tune out. Go watch it. Come back. Listen. Uh, fantastic movie. But oh, that's so what we're good. diving into right now. So, Chad, initial reaction. I loved this movie. So good. <laughs> it's so amazing. Good. I immediately, after I walked out of the theater, well, other than wanting to beat up everybody around me, I... <laughs> <laughs> I With Kung Fu. I, yeah, I was like, man, I could just start head kicking everybody right now. Because <laughs> I, I was like single filing like out of the movie theater. Uh, in that like tight hallway, you know, that you go to the exit, and mm -hmm. it was like, hmm, everybody's gonna fucking die. <laughs> uh, <laughs> by my but, foot. <laughs> yeah, by my foot. Not like a terrorist thing. Uh, but, wow, that got dark. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I said everyone's gonna die, and then I was like, hmm, people might get that weird. But yeah, no, it, I got back here with Nicole, and I was like, pretend kicking her in the head. Like,. <laughs> She's like, well, chops. She, yeah, she's like, well, what should we do for the rest of the day? And I was like, I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah. And I was like pretending to knee her in the head. Uh, <laughs> the movie is so fucking good, guys. Go watch it. Uh, and then come back if you haven't seen it. And if you have talking. seen it, go watch it again. Because Yeah, like, I'm going to. Honestly. I'm absolutely I, going to. I loved this movie. Yeah. It's just so I had. Good. I had negative things like while the thing is like being on this podcast and talking with Chad uh, daily, realistically, yeah, uh, we shit on movies left and right, and there were moments of this movie where I'm like, oh, they fucked up. I'm gonna shit on this, and then later on in the movie they corrected it, and I was like, all right, I guess never mind. I'm not gonna shit yeah. on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they knew. 
yeah. we're famous. It's so good. It's so we, we've now yeah. influenced movie writing. <laughs> that's how that's how important we are. It's not. It's super this good. This movie is just um, phenomenal. Uh, with that being said, though, like <sighs> there, there's so there's so much. First off, uh, the 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 character that is Shang Chi's father, <clears throat> the the real Mandarin. They mm-hmm. even kind of like talk about it about how like they just gave him a name after like a chicken dish. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but the the previews make it seem like he's this big old badass. But like the movie kind of plays out to where he's kind of a wiener. He's yeah. he's just kind of like heartbroken and just like now he's on a tirade basically just to like get back his dead wife. Yeah. Uh, it it he worked it worked for the story. Don't get me wrong. It worked for the story, badass, but though. he was kind of a badass though. He like was when he gets like, revenge and goes into that club. Yeah, like they show him being a badass. Yeah, and he like fucks shit up. the flashbacks, yeah. like he's definitely like just like a maniacal monster that's just like ready to fuck shit up. But the the modern day character he's arc of him is he's kind of a wiener, and he's just he's a he's a sad boy because his wife is dead. Yeah, and it, I mean it is it worked for the story, but I was really hoping just to get like the devious like mandarin that's just like there to create chaos but at the same time for argument's sake he was willing to kill his own kids oh for yeah what he wanted so he was kind of maniacal in that way yeah for sure he was he just wasn't as big of a <clears throat> villain uh for the the modern timeline yeah in flashbacks the dude was terrifying just yeah. didn't care, willing to kill anybody. And then it just kind of, he got like, almost like tunnel vision. He, well, until he meets their mom, and then he kind of... Yeah, and then he like, you know, puts away the, the, the rings, which... Puts if, on, if and he, then puts on the one more ring, yeah. the cock ring. The, the diamond-crusted cock ring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For marriage. Is that marriage? Hmm. You know, that's really funny that you said that. And I thought I I paused because I thought you were going to go there. But <clears throat> this is off topic. We didn't write this. <laughs> is this down. about the uh, Graham Norton interview with Elton John? Yes, about <laughs> Eminem. Yes, is that I, what you were I, doing, dude? That's, that's awesome. I watched that today. That's why I made that reference. <laughs> I watched you like two days ago. That's, dude, that's so fucking funny. I love that. I love you. That's amazing. <laughs> Oh, that's so great. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, uh, back in the day when uh, Eminem was being accused of being uh, homophobic and blah, 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 because of his, his lyrics and his songs, Elton John decided to do the VMAs with uh, uh, Eminem to show that he's not homophobic. And uh, I mean, Elton John is also his uh, sponsor for sobriety. Yeah. So Eminem uh, sent <laughs> Elton John as a thank you uh, to... As a wedding uh, gift. It was a wedding well, gift a wedding for him gift. and his That's husband. Was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, diamond encrusted cock rings on a red velvet pillow. <laughs> That's amazing. It's hilarious. And, that, that, and when <clears throat> you said that, I had no idea that that's what you were talking I about. I watched that that's earlier my, today. My head went <laughs> to that and I was like, does he know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> anyways, anyways, back to Shang-Chi. <laughs> so, uh, the the entire premise is Song, Shang-Chi's mother is from Ta Lao, which is some mystical village that's in between Earth and, like, the other dimensions. Sounds... Like, the entire background of this sounds very much like Kun Lun from the Iron Fist stories. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, they're retconning this. And I was, like, really upset because in the, like, even in the trailer, we see 
Uh, it turns out to be shang mother, but she's fighting uh, his father, Wen Wu, or the Mandarin, the real Mandarin. And she's wearing green and gold, which is like the Iron Fist uh, like colors. Nice. Yeah. So I was like, oh my god, we're going to be introduced. This is going to be great. Nothing. Nothing about that. And I was like, wow, they're just closing the door on Iron Fist. Like, this is super disappointing. But then they explain it. This is one of those things where we were like, ah, oh, fuck. Like, this is something I want to shit on. And then they explain it later. And Kunlun is just, like, one village in this, like, vast sub-dimensional yeah. realm in between Earth's realm and beyond. And just, like, Ta Lao, which is where Shang-Chi's mother's from, stuff like that. And I was super mad until they, like, explained it the way that they explained it. It can go either way. You know, they can introduce Iron Fist or they can just close the door on it without being disrespectful about it. So I'm okay with it, but and for it was me, cool. My similar, um, for those of you who watch or listen to this, is the, there's always something that we're like, ah, this is a good movie, but fucking this is what they did. And I didn't like it. Early on in the movie, well, not early on, it was like midway through the movie. Um, spoiler alert again, real quick. But uh, Shang basically realizes that once they go to Tao Lao, that his mom is the only person who is now dead uh, that was ever able to beat his dad in a fight. And he asked his aunt to show him uh, how it happened. Or, like, to teach him how to do it. And I was super annoyed because I was like, oh, God. Like, he learned how to fight this, like, ancient, like, fighting style in, like, ten minutes of a movie. That's fucking stupid. And (laughs) then when he's, like, in the end of the movie, when he's actually fighting his dad, they do, like, a quick cut. Because there's, like, a part where in the earlier when he when his dad is fighting his mom... They do this, like, it's almost like a dance. It's not even a fight. Like, she's just, like, reversing everything he's doing, and they're kind of dancing rather than fighting. And uh, Shang and his dad, in the end, start doing the same thing. And then they do, like, a quick cut scene to uh, Shang as a kid, and his mom is showing him these, like, moves. Uh, So he knew how to do this, like, fighting style all along. But he didn't know that he knew how to do it until he actually fought his dad, which was I thought was brilliant because it was something I wanted to be like, this is fucking dumb. I'm going to shit on this in the podcast. (laughs) And then like a half an hour later, I was like, holy fuck, this was a brilliant way to completely like wipe that out. And they did it and explain it was so that it wasn't just like a, a 10 minute like one yeah. tai chi lesson because As it's, it's some very tai chi like, like or yeah. wushu where it's very like almost like yeah. a water movement like it's very yeah. flowy he's like show me how to do this and his aunt is like oh you do this and then she kicks his ass and he's like ah fuck and then he ends up kicking his dad's ass with that same fighting style and i'm like what the fuck that was like this is dumb he learned for like five seconds and then they do a flashback and show that his mom had actually been teaching him how to fight like that since he was a little kid, but he just had no idea that that's what she was doing. Yeah. I thought it was, it was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, It was a great way to do it because she taught him as such a young child that it became like muscle memory. So like when the time came, like it was natural. Yeah. This movie is so fucking good. I have, it is zero, zero notes. Zero notes. I have nothing bad to say about this movie. It, it is nothing. A, it's foolproof. It's it's yeah. sealed. I mean, other than Wen Wu or the Mandarin uh, kind of being a little bit of a bitch, but it worked for the story. So, like, I'm not yeah. even mad about that. I just wanted more barbarian out of him, yeah. but it works so well. And I personally, I'm not a fan of Aquafina. 
I'm not a fan of her. I think I, I, I don't like hate her or anything. I just think that she's super over the top and everything she does. She like overdoes it. She is kind of obnoxious. And in this movie, she's herself, which is fine, but it's not over the top. It's not super annoying. She was actually very funny. Uh, and some people might not like that. I said that because I realized she's a very liked person. But I just think my personal yeah. opinion is she is very like too much. Yeah. You know? But they but. they made that a part of the character and then also yep. showed so much like growth through it. Yeah. Yes. That, yeah, that yeah. I really appreciated. Like at first she was mm-hmm. just kinda like, you know, the the younger kid who doesn't give a fuck and just wants to like party and do whatever. Yeah. But or. throughout the movie. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was great. Like this was she did great, uh, and I am fine with it. I, I that that was where I was going with it. I'm sorry, Aquafina, because you're definitely a listener of our podcast. Yeah, um, well, we're famous. They they chose to write a better movie because of us. Clearly, <laughs> didn't happen uh, that way. No, one. she did an awesome job in this. So if you're like me and you don't like her, it's okay. She's great. Yeah, and we also get uh, some dragons in this, which was really cool. Uh, we'll get more into the the dragon of the darkness, the destroyer of darkness, or the bringer of darkness. I don't remember exactly what they call them. We'll get into it more next week because it ties into another Marvel project, at least in our theory. theories. In theory, yeah. <clears throat> uh, we could be wrong, and that's fine. Um, but we'll we'll dive into it a little bit more. Uh, but it's basically a soul sucking demon yeah. that looks like oh. a dragon. Oh. Sorry, Mom. Um, sorry, Mom. Uh, we also get a bunch of badass cameos in here. Uh, one of them, for me, that was cool was uh, in the some part in the movie, <laughs> beginning the first half of the movie, uh, Sean goes looking for his sister, and he goes to basically like an underground fight club, unbeknownst to him. And there's people like fighting in these like glass cages all around him. And there is somebody in one of the cages that is infected with uh, Extremis from Iron Man 3. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool, just as a little tie-in to, you know. Yeah. But who else do we see? We also see Wong. You know, like, the Wong. Like, Beyonce Wong uh, from Doctor Strange and Infinity War and Endgame. (laughs) But also, uh, he's fighting... Emil Blonsky, which is the Abomination. The Abomination does look different uh, in this film. Yeah, take it for but what it, you will. But it's, I think, well, so it's they 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 have explained it in an interview that it's he does look different, obviously, uh, but it's because he is since the Incredible Hulk uh, with Ed Norton. Um, because those movies are canon, God damn it! Or that movie was canon. Uh, <laughs> Abomination only had just begun. It, when he became Abomination in that movie, it was uh, within 30 minutes of exposing himself to the radiation. So this is like years later. Uh, he has continued to uh, evolve. Yeah. So that's why he looks different. But it's the same character. It is the same character. It is the same voice. Also, it's still Tim Roth. Yeah. Um, which was <clears throat> awesome. Yeah. Uh, we also get some jokes, especially from Aquafina, about uh, mm. Shang Chi. His alias is Sean, <laughs> which is why oh. Jake introduced it as Sean Chi. Sean Chi. They're on. They're on the plane to go <clears throat> find uh, Shang Chi's uh, sister. And he's like, my real name is Shang-Chi. And she's like, yeah, Shang-Chi. He's like, no, Shang-Chi. She's like, Shang-Chi. He's like, no, S-H-A-N-G, Chi. And she's like, you changed your name from Shang to Sean? No wonder your dad found you. Yeah. She's like, and she goes, that's like saying, hi, my name is Gina. I'm going into hiding, and my new name is going to be Gina. No wonder your dad found you. <laughs> <laughs> like just straight <laughs> hilarious. 
Yeah, that's good. It was a good line. Uh, and his only re- re- uh, like retort to his, I was 16. Yeah. Um, but, like, this movie is just great. Um, yeah. there, there's oh. so much in it. It's so much fun. Um, ben. You gotta oh. bring up Ben. Oh, yeah. We do get Ben Kingsley ben. back. If you don't remember who Ben Kingsley is by name, Ben Kingsley played the Trevor actor, Slattery. The actor who played the Mandarin in Iron Man 3. Uh, we yeah. see him again, and it's a fucking riot, dude. <laughs> he's so fucking funny. Which is uh, great, because Ben Kingsley is usually... I mean, he's a classically a very trained serious actor, actor. Very yeah. serious, and he normally does play a very devious bad guy. Yeah. Which made Iron Man 3 for a twist, because like you're like, yeah. oh, it's Ben Kingsley, he's the bad guy. And then you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there's... So when you first meet him, there's... He's like, you hear like all these weird noises and it's like him like doing his like voice warm ups, which you find out later. But for, they're like in a prison and you hear like, whoa, and they're like, oh, God, what is that noise? You go in there. It's Ben. It's Trevor. And they're like, who are you? And he's like, I'm Trevor. <laughs> you Trevor's know, like, not, right? Yeah. And I'm then an actor. All of a sudden, this like weird little creature it looks like a fucking pillow with wings on it comes You're out. like a pillow pet. Yeah, but like and with wings. Like, and Shang and uh, Aquafina's character, I forget her name in the movie. Katie. Katie. Are like, oh, what the hell is that? And he goes, you can see it too. And he's like, oh my God, I thought I'd been hallucinating all these years. It's super funny. <laughs> it's a, he was a great addition to this movie. I thought it was I think he fucking was, amazing. Like for as funny as the interaction between uh, Shang and Katie was, he was, he, was, the comic he was the comic relief. Yeah, yeah. Like, he just sure. goes on, like, rants, like, talking about, yeah. like, how important, like, acting was. He even goes on, like, a rant about uh, Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Planet of the Apes. Because. <laughs> he thinks the apes are real. Still to this day. Like, the that, 1970s I, version. That's what made him, like, want to be an actor was Because he, he approached his mom and was like, how did they get those monkeys to ride the horses? And she's like, oh, no, honey. To, to, he, they're he acting. Some, yeah. And he's like, oh, so they weren't even riding the horses. They were just acting and pretending to ride the horse. Like, yeah. doesn't get that the, the, the monkeys in Planet of the Apes weren't real. Yeah. <laughs> he's an idiot. Oh, but it's hilarious. Very funny. What was the other part? The uh, oh, playing dead part. Playing yeah. dead. So during, like, the final battle, you see, so the little winged pillow pet uh, is named Maurice. Morris. Mor- Morris. Morris. Maurice. <laughs> That'd be funnier, but uh, Morris. Morris, he like runs up and sees Ben Kingsley's character like laying on the ground like limp, and he like starts to whimper at him, and Ben Kingsley's like, "I'm just acting, love, like lay down, pretend, like this yeah. is all an act." He's like, "This is a performance." He's like, "Lay oh, down here with me so he can survive," and the Morris just like flips over on his back and is like, pretends to be dead. <laughs> That's super it's funny. hilarious. Um, a couple other notable mentions for this movie. Uh, again, spoiler alert. We get to see at some at one of the end credit scenes. We, we do get two end credit scenes with this movie. Two also. end credit scenes. Uh, one of them is we see Captain Marvel and Bruce Banner. Bruce Banner is Bruce Banner, not the Hulk. We see Mark fucking lame-ass uh, as Bruce Banner. Oh, yeah. sorry. Was that his name? Uh, I thought it was. <laughs> uh, we see Mark Ruffalo as Bruce Banner again. So somehow we don't know how yet. He has because last time we saw him was in Endgame, and he had fused uh, the Hulk to uh, Banner and become Professor Hulk. But now in this movie, which is after Endgame, he is now Banner again. And he's wearing an arm sling because obviously his arm got fucked up when he did the snap in Endgame. Um, but he is Bruce Banner again, so we do not know what the fuck is going on there. There's a handful of theories out there. Uh, we're pretty sure that it's going to be explained with the She-Hulk series. Yeah, uh, that would be my assumption. <clears throat> yeah, there, there's a few that I don't really want to get into right now. We'll, he's also we'll, been we'll dive seen on into the... It. He's also been seen on the set of the Moon Knight series that's filming right now. 
So Ooh. we'll see him in there too. Yeah, so as we start to see more of Mark Ruffalo as Bruce Banner, we'll start diving into to more <laughs> of those theories as to as to why pick it up. Keep going. It's fine. Oh, you just spilled all that. Oh, this is not going to be good. Uh, so we're going to f- flash through that, but there's an end credit scene with that. That ends hilariously. There's also an end credit scene showing uh, Shang-Chi's sister basically uh, recreating uh, the Ten Rings after their father's death and taking it over. And then it ends and says the Ten Rings will return. So, yeah. So, with that being said, we are going to hop into our next sponsor. <laughs> Didn't mean to, to take this from you. It's just that Jake dropped his drink. Uh, I dumped my entire drink in my nut sack. Uh, it's <laughs> cold as fuck. It Keep doesn't feel up. that cold. <laughs> That's Sorry. not my nut sack. If you, if you guys aren't, color. If you aren't watching. Oh, yeah, this one's white. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Mm. Mm. I feel bad for saying that. But so we're we're gonna hop into our second sponsor when we come back, guys. Though we, I'll be in different clothes when I come back. But samezies. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we'll also be uh, diving into our our interview with Ken, uh, talking about his Kickstarter and getting to talk with him. He's a lot of fun. So please stick around. Uh, sponsor uh, for this is Raise Energy Drinks. Fantastic energy drink. Uh, bunch of protein options out there. Listen up learn how to save 15 percent what's up nerds i wanted to take a minute and talk to you about raise energy an incredible energy drink that provides max energy with zero crash raise energy takes a giant leap of faith with instilling a high quality formula to bring a powerful yet sustained energetic experience to help you push your workouts and focus to the next level perfect for anyone at any time empowered by their refresh formula technology Raise Energy delivers a performance-enhancing energy drink that aids in multiple different categories that include targeted focus, better recovery time, improved clean energy levels, and a boost in stamina and hydration. But most importantly, every can of Raise Energy has absolutely zero calories, zero sugar, and zero carbohydrates to give you a smarter and healthier option. So don't settle for an energy drink that contains more sugar and carbohydrates than you can count. Instead, head over to repsports.com. That's R-E-P-P-S-P-O-R-T-S dot com and use the promo code NERDPODCAST at checkout for 15% off your order. Or if you don't know what you want, go ahead and click the link that's in the description to get a $50 sample pack for free. All you do is you cover the cost of shipping. Again, make sure you use promo code NERDPODCAST at checkout to let them know that we sent you. All right, guys, so this week we're lucky to sit down with uh, Ken Knutson. He's a comic book writer and artist. Ken, welcome to the podcast. Uh, thank you, guys. I appreciate uh, you inviting me on. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you um, for coming. Yeah, we're excited to have you here. This is, this is our second, only our second interview so far, but this is going to be cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So while we... Ken, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your Kickstarter to just get things going here. Okay. Um, hey, everybody. My name is Ken Newton. Uh, I'm from New York, and I moved down to Charlotte, North Carolina in 2017. I am, I've am i been drawing since as young as I can remember and reading comics just as long. Uh, I love them. Um, I'm a graduate of School of Visual Arts in New York City where I was fortunate enough to have instructors like Klaus Janssen, Walt Simonson, John Ruggieri, Jack Potter, Joe Orlando. Um, and I am super psyched that I have a Kickstarter on September 13th for a collection of my comic book, My Monkey's Name is Jennifer. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so, and Walt Simonson was the one that did one of those variant covers, correct? Uh, yes. Um, and Walt did one of the covers, and Klaus uh, inked uh, two covers for me. That's Sweet. awesome. Yeah, he had to do it twice because the pencil that I used was a little too smooth, and when he went to erase uh, the stray lines, the ink came off too. And oh, he's, no. like, he's like, I'd be happy to ink this again if you redraw it again with different pencils. I'm like, I understand, and yes, I will. <laughs> 
Um, before we get super deep into this, uh, I do want to ask you just because this is what we this is what we do on our podcast is we drink and shoot the shit. Uh, what are you drinking, and what is your drink of choice? Uh, before I moved down here, I was a heavy vodka drinker. I didn't start drinking until I was 20. And at work one day, someone's like, we should drink at work. And I'm like, I guess I'll just drink vodka. Why not? Uh, but towards the end, uh, Jerry Ma, who was, I think, your first guest, yeah. um, he, he, got, he got me into whiskey. So right now, I'm drinking some Old Foresters okay. out, of, out of my, uh, my monkey's name is Jennifer shot glass. That's see, awesome. uh, hold that up a little. I, I couldn't see it. Could you? Ah, uh, shit. Uh, I don't know if that's the green work. screen. But, oh, there, oh, there it that. goes. There it goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's an angry monkey on it. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so cool. So you've been writing and illustrating these stories of, you know, my monkey's name is Jennifer for 20 years now. Yeah. What? Where did the inspiration for this character and for the series come from? Uh, just after graduating college, um, I was hanging out with Jerry and a couple of our other friends and we decided like, we're going to try and do our own comics. Um, for them, they already had ideas ready to go. I had nothing. So when I slept back to Long Island on the train, I was very sad and depressed because Long Island sucks. And I sat down, <laughs> um, and the Simpsons was on and it happened to be the best episode ever. The one with Mojo, the helper monkey. So okay. after that, I'm like, I'll draw a comic about a monkey. And then I'm like, I don't know what to do. So I thought, like, I'll make him angry monkey. And what would make him angry? So for me, my writing style is clearly um, secondary to my drawing. So when I write, it's what do I want to draw. So a monkey sounds cool. Um, and they go on a pirate ship. That sounds cool. I'll make them speak in rhyme. That's something I don't want to do again because that was way harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I read that. I thought that was cool. Um, so, I, I, when when I was reading about you and your uh, graphic novel coming up and your stories that you've written so far, um, I love the fact that Jennifer is actually a male monkey uh, named and dressed up as a female in dresses, right, by Caitlin, who's a teenager? Uh, like preteen, yeah. Preteen, Okay. And uh, I was curious, where did that, like, in the in the story, it says that uh, uh, Jennifer's weakness is Caitlin. He's kind of a, like a brooding, uh, kind of a mad all the time, right? Am I wrong by yeah. saying that? So a why is nervous. <laughs> why is why is Caitlin his weakness? Uh, I I don't go. I never really thought about how it started. Started like, how did the parents let this happen? Yeah. Um, it's kind of like Muppet Babies. You just jump right in. And, like, <laughs> this is the status quo. Like, the monkey is clearly miserable. Um, and the, the Caitlin's completely oblivious to it most of the time. Um, and the parents are like, well, how, how are we going to get through this? Uh, <clears throat> so they have them neutered. They have them declawed. Um, <laughs> no. They're constantly they're constantly bopping them on the head. Um, oh. Yeah. Sorry, oh, so, so the line is... <laughs> So the line uh, where he says, um, if I still had my claws, which is a reoccurring uh, <laughs> it line in that, is because Caitlin's parents had him declawed yep. like you would a house cat. Okay, cool. <laughs> I, we were oh laughing goodness. about it, like in a good way, before we called you guys on here. And we were like, I was like, I love this line. And I'm here. I'm going to ask him about this line because this is hilarious. <laughs> and that, that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> So they're treating him like a like a house cat, basically neutered, removed his claws, and they bop him on the head. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So really, Caitlin's the only one happy with this living situation. Ah. <laughs> <Aww>. oh. <laughs> Poor monkey. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but also, like throughout the you know like the the stories that you already have out there, like you come across or like they come across these wild, you know, like villains and characters, uh, you know, the singing pirates, the rapping alpacas, the doc, is it Dr. Tunic yep. that, that wants to just take brain matter out of teenagers and stuff like that. So like when, when coming up with these characters, do you just like, is it still along those lines of what would be funny to draw? 
or fun to draw and then build the characters around that? Or do you like find someone or do you like pull inspiration from people that you know where you're like, this guy's like one step away from being a rapping pirate. Let's just exaggerate it. <laughs> uh, it's actually a, a, a fun mix of both because the pirate and the doctor are both based on two of my best friends. Um, <laughs> They, they both were excited when I was when I was said I was going to draw comics. Like, oh, everyone's like, can we be in it? And then is one of everyone, them Jerry. Jerry is not one of them. No, oh, uh, he's like high, uh, junior high and high school friends. Okay. Uh, one of them, one of them is a doctor, and his name is Doctor Tunic. Um, <laughs> like, I, none of these names are changed. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, and what's great is when you tell your friend that they're going to be in the comic, they're excited because they know who I am, and the parents kind of know who I am, and they go to the comic store. They buy it. Like, what? What is this? Who is your friend? <laughs> I love it. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, so I, I was looking at your like web store and uh, stuff like that, and I saw like a bunch of a bunch of your like prints and stuff like that. All amazing. Uh, I had a couple questions for you. Um, so I saw that you use a lot of different styles of drawing. Whether it's um, uh, looks like uh, charcoal or <clears throat> excuse me, I wrote it down because I didn't know what it was and I lost my spot on here. God damn it! Uh, uh, the sumi. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have a like a favorite type of style that you draw with, or do you just kind of do it all over the board? Uh, I mean, I'm fortunate where most of the project I work on, whether it's for myself or a job, I can I can have a heavy say in what what materials I'm going to have to use unless it's something like has to be specific um, sure. to whatever the, the brand is. Okay. Um, I love Sumi ink. That's uh, like the, the black flack ink. Um, mm. I love using heavy line. I'm not so much like um, a shader or a cross hatcher. Uh, for me, I get a lot of uh, mass from the heavy shadows and how I use color. So I'm getting better at regular watercolor painting, but I don't really care just because I combine that with oil bars, which is like a messy combination of pastels and oil paint. And whenever I'm done with the piece, I've got art supplies on my face, under my fingernails. <laughs> um, like that will live there for a week. That's awesome. Uh, and then as a follow-up to that question, I did notice that uh, you have drawn a ton of, uh, our whole thing is nerd stuff. And you've drawn a ton of shit for <clears throat> DC, Marvel, Star Wars, John Wick, uh, Godzilla, Bruce Lee. Do you have a favorite that you like to draw for any of those genres, or are you just whatever they ask me to do? Uh, it's it's nice when you get asked to draw Star Wars. Like I did a ton of uh, Star Wars cards for tops. Um, I love Keanu Reeves movies. Um, yeah. That's why I draw a lot of John Wick stuff. Um, I love superhero. Like I, I love a little bit of everything. Um, somebody y yesterday mentioned that they asked if I would be interested in doing a James Bond comic because they saw a lot of the stuff like the, the noir stuff. And like, I think that would be a perfect fit. I'm like, that, that would, would be, be a cool. perfect fit. You know, dynamite. I'm right here. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh yeah. I, I do have a favorite, by the way, I just want to throw this out there just because I was talking about it with Chad before we got into this, but the uh, Superman blue. That, All right. You're my favorite is, now. <laughs> seriously? Yes. Dude, that, that thing, thing is, is the so tits, cool. man. Yeah, I was, yeah. I love a lot of, like, like I'm not sure how old you guys. I think we look like we're in the same age vicinity. I'm 34. He's, like, 22 I'm, or something like I'm that. I'm 30. <laughs> it's the youthfulness. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and, the, and the glowing balls. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, is this being uh, video filmed or is it just sound? Yes. Oh, it's it video. Is. Yeah, it's video. Okay, all right. So people will see that. Okay. Um now, like, I love, like, the dumb ideas Marvel and DC had in the 90s. Like, I love Asbats. I, I love the visual ridiculousness of this super heavy armored guy with just, like, tights on his bottom. Um, <laughs> I love the craziness of Spidey 29 design. Um, oh, yeah. I, I love how ridiculous Electric Blue Super. I can't forget what, what they really called him, but, like, Electric Blue Superman. I'm a Debbie Gibson fan, too. Um, so like, and they decided the best storyline for him was, what if he splits into red electric Superman and there's two of them? And I'm like, this is even better. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm part of a group with uh, Jerry and some other guys, uh, Bernard Chang, um, 
Sean Chen, Andy McDonald, and like everyone else who wants to join in. And the week's prompt was Superman. I'm like, I know exactly who I'm drawing. Dude. Like oh, yeah. the distant second choice would have been Eradicator Superman from uh, the death and return of Superman. Cause I love yeah. the, I love that S shield that goes into the Cape and the goggles, but no, nah, it had to be blue Superman. Yeah. Yeah. That That's thing awesome. is insane. Yeah. I love it. So I, I love all of it, honestly, but that was definitely my favorite. I was looking at it uh, all day today and uh, the, all of your prints, I was like going through them. Cause I was like, which one do I want to ask him about? And that was the one that just popped out at me. I was like, this thing is fucking rad. So, yeah. It's so cool. I I am Thanks, partial to the to the Star Wars ones just because I'm a huge Star Wars fan and nerd. And that Boba Fett one, like the standalone. <laughs> oh. Did you like the Boba Mandalorian? Fett. Did you like seeing uh, him suited back up in Mandalorian Season 2? And like I love the Mandalorian, um, with one caveat. When he first reveals that he can't take the helmet off, I'm like, "Oh, that's going to be a storyline problem down the line." And like they kind of skirted past it, like here and there, like when he was drinking his broth. I guess that's all he's able to eat. Uh, like even with Baby Yoda there, like he's like he just lifts it up and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I liked how they started to resolve that, like when they had to break into the Imperial compound with uh, Bill Burr. And he's like, is the rule you can't take this helmet off or you got to have a helmet on? Like, well, what's going on here? Um, but yeah, I like the Mandalorian. I, I love, um, I'm blanking on that actor's name who played uh, uh, Django in uh, the prequels that came back as Boba Fett in the Mandalorian. Oh my goodness. Uh, because, I should know Because he's also, he's Aquaman's dad in the yeah. Aquaman movie too. Oh. Um, yeah, I like, I I'm a huge Aquaman fan, and when I saw him pop up in that early part of the movie, I'm like, oh, Django Fett, like, you're, he's your dad, like, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I really um, want to look this up, because it's What do they call good. him uh, when he showed up in The Mandalorian, like, Thick Boba, or something like that? <laughs> yeah. Because he's like, like, nah, no, nah, I'm not getting abs for this, this is what I would be like right now. <laughs> yeah. he's like, uh, and I, I have a Tusken Raider staff, too, watch out. Yeah. Uh, Raylan Givens. Is the yes. actor. Yes. Oh, um, he's so good. Yeah, so clearly we love Justified. And when they brought him, uh, like, like, yeah, he's wearing the Boba Fett armor. And I'm like, I cannot wait for this. Yeah. And the look of surprise on his face every time Mando suggested something. He's like, what is... Yeah, I guess that's what we'll do to keep people safe. Whatever. <laughs> wait, so the TV show Justified, Raylan Givens is the guy's name from... He's uh, that's Tim- his Timothy name. Oliphant, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, funny. Oh, I never even put that together. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, neither did I. <laughs> did kind of yeah. forgot he was in that. <clears throat> now, now you enjoy it more. Yeah. I love Justified. I thought that was a good show. <laughs> <clears throat> so kind of like continuing on with like your, your prints uh, that are on your website, uh, you know, I noticed that there's some Shang-Chi prints. Are you excited for the movie? Uh, I am. Um, when that prompt came up like about a month ago, you know, I, do, I like to do a little research on the characters, so I'm not just drawing like the same thing that's on a cover right now. Or, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, like, I like to do a little bit of um, their personality or their history in it. And I read that, you know, on the Wikipedia page, I, I tried to glance over what the movie was because I didn't want to be spoiled on it. Um, but apparently in the late 80s, early 90s, Stan Lee was trying to get Brandon Lee to do this as either a TV show or a standalone movie. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, whoa, I'm like, I would have loved to see that because oh, yeah. love the crow, love rapid fire. Um, yeah, if they did a movie in the late 80s, early 90s, it would be like the Dolph Lundgren Punisher. It'd be awful. Still would have <laughs> been cool. It would have been nostalgic yeah. now. Yeah. 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 Um, like that would have been a great triple feature for a day off of uh, rapid fire. Brandon Lee is Shang- Shang-Chi and The Crow. Like, that would be cool. Yeah. It's a lot of alcohol, though, that day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. We, so, uh, Jerry turned us on to uh, Warrior, and that was fucking fantastic. Speaking of Lee's, sorry, because, uh, yeah. you know, that was supposed to be Bruce Lee uh, originally. Uh, did you watch it? I have not gotten to that yet. I know it's, it's now on HBO Max, which I have. Yeah. Yeah. So once I wrap up the Titans, I think that's my next show. Woo! Yeah, we're watching that right now. But yeah, 
Warrior is fucking badass, dude. Uh, and Jerry's friends with a couple of cast members. Like he, they, they were at the the booth with them having us, a couple yeah. of drinks. Yeah. Uh, one of my friends asked him for the picture <laughs> and like, do you want to like, do you want to like a pose? He's like, let's pretend you kicked me. I'm like, they've been drinking a lot all day, man. Like, I, don't... <laughs> um, I guess we're gonna find out how close they can hold that kick. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, um, he... the answer is they can hold it pretty close, and my friend looked a little concerned. <laughs> I wouldn't even care. Just kick me in the face for the yeah. picture. I'm good with it. Yeah. That, that's a story in and of itself. Like, that's great. Yeah. I got kicked in the face by that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Father cool. June beat the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> mm. Um, so, uh, can you, without, like, spoiling anything for the plot of your new material uh, with this graphic novel... Uh, can you tell us anything about the plot or not really keeping it kind of? Um, it's really a couple of short stories, um, a couple of short stories, a couple of new drawings. Um, the big thing for me was uh, collecting this all together again, because it's the, fir- the original six issues. And then with the next round, uh, SLG and I you agreed to just jump straight to a second uh, graphic novel. So this is going to have 200 something pages in it. Um, and, yeah, and it's been out of print for a little while, so I really wanted to have it, like, at least in my hands again. Uh, especially once, once conventions are safe again. Yeah. Um, but like, a lot of people, especially with like people I've met down here, like, oh, is there a place I can get this? I'm like, eh, it's out of print right now. Uh, I'll get to it eventually doing a Kickstarter. And with this year being 20 years since it got released, fuck it, well, I got to do it now. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. I'm excited about it. Thank just you. Re- just reading about it in research, like I said, Chad and I were both were getting giddy about it, like just talking about it. We're like, dude, we got to fucking read this. This is crazy. I think it's cool. Yeah, so. I'm super excited. It... Thank you. Yeah, I well, mean, that, yeah. Having to, getting to rescan every single page again. And, um, you know, there was a lot of jokes, a lot of drawings that I had forgotten. And I'm like, you know, I get little chuckle or a little giggle here and there. I'm like, oh, I remember doing this. I remember doing this. I remember when people conventions like, I love that line. Yeah. Does it ever uh, kind of like, as you're like going back through and like rescanning these, does it ever kind of, does it like spark ideas for, for new jokes or is it just more of like nostalgia? Like, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny back then. Or are you like, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I know where I can take this. I can create like reoccurring jokes off of this that might be fanfare or anything like that. Um, yes. Um, I was talking with Jerry and, you know, wondering how to reset myself to maybe do the next Jennifer, whatever that may be. And it was his suggestion, like, do it simple, man. Like, it's a funny book. Do a one page joke, however you want to break it down. So I came up and I had sketched. It's not going to be in this one, but. Ideally, this will jumpstart whatever is next. So I have, I think, three or four <laughs> six-panel, uh, one-page joke things. Uh, one of them has Aquaman in it because he's awesome. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. So are you a <laughs> fan of Momoa as Aquaman then? or? I mean, he's clearly not playing Aquaman, but <laughs> man, he's just, that... he's just playing Jason Momoa. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's called Drogo and, that can know, swim. Exa- like... He was on Baywatch. That was one of his first uh, jobs. Uh, oh, I forgot about that. Like, I, yeah. I'm happy that the only thing he said that was kind of embarrassing was like, I could have peed on it. Like, <laughs> um, but when uh, the director James Wan was doing yeah. initial promos for it, he's like, he listed like like eight movies that he loved over his whole life. He's like, my job is to figure out how to cram them <laughs> all into this. Yeah, and it was so much fun. And That's my buddy on. David watching it with me, he, he laughed at me at the end of the movie. He's like. You audibly gasped twice during this movie. <laughs> uh, what were the two time, moments? Okay, I was just going to ask, where, where did you gasp? The first was uh, when Black Manta, is, his initial helmet blows up. I'm like, it wasn't big enough. He's like, I need to make it bigger. I'm like, oh. <laughs> and then when um, Orm is getting his crown as the king of Atlantis and Dolph Lundgren swims up and he's like, you're the king of Atlantis. And... Um, Patrick, what, whatever his name is, that that perfectly Patrick, slimy look. Patrick Wilson. Yes, um, he does the dramatic villain turn, 
in comics real uniform. And he's like, don't call me that. Call me as he puts on the helmet. Yeah. He's like, call me Ocean Master. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I loved it. I loved they got him in the orange and green pretty early on. Mm. Um, I love that they didn't let you stop long enough to think about some of the things. Um, I love that it was all, I love Black Mana. Um, yeah. Willem Dafoe was a little weird. I think the octopus playing the drums was a little weird. Uh, that's, from the, that's from the cartoon. My, my gasping point for me, I saw that movie uh, by myself in theaters. Um, and I had had a couple beers before I went in. And I was like, right away, kind of like, Eh, I don't know. And uh, when he first like goes into the water, and you see what he sees when his eyes like, and you can see like how he sees the ocean. I was like, oh, this movie's cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the movie is cool. Um, and I love the scene where he's he's grumpy Arthur in the bar with his with his uh, Boba Fett dad, and the bikers <laughs> come up behind and like they look at tough. I'm like, they just gonna want a picture, and he's like, can we get a picture? He's like, mm. and each snapshot shows him getting drunker and drunker and having and more happier and, more and happier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. Until he's got to carry his sleeping dad out to the car. <laughs> I do. We didn't plan for this question, but I do have to ask. Uh, I know that we have talked about this for days now, uh, that you did some illustration for Wolverine. Uh, and one of the things that Chad and I have been talking about for months, if, if not longer, is who would make a good recast as Wolverine? Do you have an opinion on this? I know it's jokey, but man, do I love seeing um, the fan Photoshop art of Danny DeVito as Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a real campaign people are trying to wait. I saw it on Instagram. That's actually pretty funny. Because he's the right height, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. my, my favorite Wolverine in the comics, drawn wise, is Kent Williams where he looks like a slightly shaved gorilla. Like, he's always hunched over. He's got that weird slick spikes of his hair. Mm. Uh, his arms are too long and too bulky. Just ridiculous, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I like Hugh Jackman fine. Um, he's too pretty. He's too He's tall. also, like, 6'2". Yeah. 6'1". <laughs> 6'1". Yeah. Yeah. One. One. We looked it up. That's oh, yeah. how tall he is? 6'1", <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, like, a foot too tall. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. So, what would you think about uh, John Bernthal? Uh, Still too yeah. tall, obviously. Chad, but Chad likes uh, what's his name, Taron Taron Egerton. Uh, he's from the, the Kingsman. Yes, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I've learned never to rule out a casting out of hand. Um, and with the height, I mean, Lord of the Rings figured out how to make all people at the same height look dramatically different. True. Yeah. Like, like the hobbits are really not four and a half feet tall. Yeah. Um. Like, you can figure that out. Um, John Barrington, like, I loved him as a Punisher only because the Punisher really can't carry his own thing. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen him star in anything. I love him as the just, side yeah. character. He just yells a lot. And I just feel like he would be a good Wolverine because he's just like... For the, gr- the grunts you know, and the like, yeah. animalistic cries. <laughs> um, for your guy, um, the Kingsman... I haven't seen him in anything other than The Kingsman, I think, where he's very proper and British. So maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, he's in that. He also plays like he hasn't done a role like that, though. I mean, the well, closest. He did, Rocket... he did Rocket Man. Well, yeah, that's uh, Sir Elton John. John. That's the oh, farthest that. you can get from Wolverine. Um, <laughs> just saying. Uh, well, I mean, have you seen um, the casting tape for Hugh Jackman? It was all his Broadway stuff. Oh yeah, and like looking at that, I'm like, whoever saw him as Wolverine, like give that man a raise. Yeah, agreed. So I, I guess I, to go back to it, the, do you have anybody in mind other than other than Danny DeVito? Because that's hilarious. But like realistically, Marvel is never going to do that. So do you yeah. have like a realistic like anybody you could think of that would play Wolverine in your head, whether you think that any of us would agree with it or not i mean with with casting like this or james james bond whatever i'm always drawn to the older version so like an older wolverine i think a daniel craig would be cool um i'm basically looking for someone who squints and can growl (laughs) 
I like it. Daniel Craig? I can see that. I, I saw something online a while ago that it was uh, um, Anthony Starr with brown hair for a younger Wolverine. Uh, that is, is that? Uh, Homelander from The Boys. Oh, okay. With brown hair, like, maybe. He could probably... He would be a maybe. tall version yeah, again. Yeah, he would be... You know. He's like Hugh Jackman height. Yeah. <clears throat> but again, like, if... If Marvel has some balls, maybe hanging off a microphone stand, you could lend yours. Um, <laughs> they, can, they can they can CGI Calm. him to be five feet tall. Yeah, yeah. Which makes which would make the 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 fights with him and Cyclops hysterical. Hysterical, yeah. <laughs> like Cyclops, Cyclops can be a dick and just not look down, and Wolverine's like, I'm trying to talk to you. <laughs> He's like, one eye, I can't see down. <laughs> no depth perception here. Just <laughs> forward. Do you see uh, these goggles I'm wearing? I don't even have yeah. peripherals, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. It's like, what is this cat I keep stepping on? It keeps yelling at me. <laughs> and why does it know English and a lot of swear words? Yeah. A lot. It scratches like a motherfucker, though. <laughs> yeah, you have a tiny Wolverine trying to scramble up the refrigerator to get to the booze. It's like, Hops keeps putting it too hot. Although, because I think Wolverine technically is only supposed to be like four... 10 or he's a very short. I thought he was right? like 5'2. He's 5'2 no. because, yeah, five he's 5'2 two. Two because Puck is just under 5 feet. So and he's Ke- he- so he's Kevin Hart. Cast Kevin Hart. <laughs> let's, be di- let's be diversive. Kevin Hart's 5'2. Let's get a black Wolverine. I think that's perfect. Perfect yeah. casting. We figured it out. Good job, guys. Make the rock Cyclops and that back and <laughs> back and forth is just game over. Jumanji no, 3, like, the X-Men. He's going to be like Colossus or something. He's too big. He's way too big. Oh, could you imagine those fastball specials? He's like, no, we don't need CGI. I just pick them up and throw them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that wasn't called for in the script, but that's fine. <laughs> Somebody catch him. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Bring it back in, Chad. Bring it back in. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking A. All right, Ken. Uh, So, uh, you know, we're going to start kind of wrapping this up. Uh, Do you have any, uh, like, final words about, you know, the the Kickstarter? Where can people find you online? Um, Anything that is sticking out to you in the realm of nerd that you think people should be paying more attention to? Anything like that that you want to... You want to shout out? Yeah, man. Um, first off, I'm on social media with my name. I try to make it simple as possible, even as badly spelled as it is. Uh, so it's so everything. Everything social media is. It's for me. It's K E N K N U D T S E N. And hopefully, autofill will help you find me before you stumble through the DTS of my last name. Um, <laughs> the Kickstarter. Um, I'll have the link up on my profiles the week before, so you can click on to the coming soon page. And it'll give you updates when it's coming. Thank you, Jerry and Alan, for letting me know that's a feature. Um, <laughs> we will also link to it in our show notes yeah. during the we'll entire our, run. Stuff on our stuff too, yeah. During the Thank entire you. run of the Kickstarter as well. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, man, like I love comics. Right now, I'm really into that uh, image, specifically recommender mode, where it's six issues. You give them three months off, and they come back, and they're fresh, and it's the same creative team. Like. I got the last uh, graphic novel for Load not too long ago, and I have a pile of all of that, the whole run, waiting for me to dive into and catch up, like, just relive it all at once, and I'm super psyched for that. But, I mean, Kickstarter is the way you find new stuff. Um, Jerry's on there, our friend uh, that runs Wave Blue World has had a bunch of successful stuff. You can just, like, scroll through it, and there's going to be something to catch your eye. So, I mean... I love Kickstarter. Um, I'm not just saying that because I'll be on it, but yeah, kind of. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's like putting on a, um, a Spotify radio channel. Like I like I like the CRJ because I do love the CRJ. Uh, let's see what else pops up. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm digging the Titans because Aquaman from Smallville is Hawk in this. Yeah. Oh, dude, did you Smallville, dude? I fucking love Smallville. <laughs> I got my girlfriend watching it right now. I've been telling this dude about it. Other than the fucking weird sex chapter chick, uh, uh, Allison Mack, 
That, eh. show, that show is it, badass. It, we can admit yeah, that she's the I worst. I love that show. I almost brought it up earlier. I don't remember what you said. You said something, and it uh, got in here, and I was like, oh, they're not going to know what that is. But you do. And it makes <laughs> me happy. So. <laughs> I loved when the Flash first shows up there, and it's the kid. I'm like, there's no yeah. way they're going to let Impulse be the first Flash. Bart and Clark shows, in his, yeah. Yeah, Clark shows up in his apartment because like, the kid's a, a grifter. And yep. he's like all these fake IDs, and he's just throwing out all of the Flash names. Yeah. And I'm like, perfect. Yeah. There's so many like hints and clues to like crazy shit, and that that, that show is good. I I'm glad I got ten seasons. I, I started watching that when it first came out when I was a, I was middle school. I must have been in middle school at that time. And fuck, dude, it ended like <laughs> after I graduated high school, and I was still watching it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That show is Michael awesome. Rosenberg is perhaps one of the greatest Lex Luthers ever of any oh, media. Yeah. Uh, Rosenbaum, right? Rosenbaum, I'm sorry. Yeah. Rosenbaum, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, he was fantastic. I love yeah. him. Yeah, he, yeah, he's so good. And I love that he came back for the final season, which was... That was the best part of a shitty finale. Yeah. <laughs> Dark Side is a bunch of weird crows, okay? Dark Side sucked, but... Sorry, Chad. Uh, oh, that's fine. It, <laughs> Dark Side it, sucked. It's Donald been out Glover, for years. Is it Danny Glover, Donald Glover as Darkseid also sucked? Like, why did they do that? Um, but uh, fucking Clark suiting up for the first time was super cool. Uh, yeah, it was a good show. Chad, watch it. Just go. I watch it. I will eventually. <laughs> <laughs> you can r- really after you watch the um, the pilot, you can skip ahead to season two or uh, season three because most of the first two seasons like. Oh, here's because a little bunch of kryptonite that lands on uh, Smallville. So I, I feel mean, like it's Clark. I feel like season two had a lot of like uh, nostalgic with um, Christopher Reeve. I think comes in at one point, and or the, is that season three? And Terrence Stamp doing the voice of Jor El in season two. Also, Shit, that's right. And he played uh, Terrence Stamp played uh, Jor El in the seventies movies. Yeah. So, yeah. No, Terrence Stamp was Zod. Zod, that's what I meant. Sorry, yeah. Jesus. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So skip ahead to season two after the premiere. Um, <laughs> the premiere is really good. Um, but then it's because like, oh, this person becomes a werewolf because this kryptonite bought them. I'm like that's dumb. Yeah, it was the meteorites fucking yeah. give people powers, and it gets a little weird for a little while. But there's see, I feel like season two had a lot of nods to uh, some stuff. But yeah, season three is where it really like. And then season four, when they bring in Lois Lane. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Erica she, Durant is great. Yeah. Lois Lane. Yeah. She was awesome. Yeah. 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 I'll, watch it. I'll Sorry, Chad. watch it. Okay. <laughs> now he is going to watch it because I've been telling him to watch it and he won't watch it. Now that you told him to watch it, he's going to watch it. He's <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good. Uh, all right. And I guess, I guess just like that, Jake is now saying like, Ken is a much better guest than Jerry Ma. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to. I wasn't the one that said it. Either or, people. <laughs> I, I can't say no. it. You guys are, were both fucking amazing. Um, <laughs> it has been a delight having you guys here. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, uh, you froze. Oh, am I unfrozen for you? No, you're good. You're good okay. now. Yeah, you're <laughs> All right. So uh, we do just have a couple of uh, quick, like, housekeeping things that we have to throw out before we uh close out basically i mean first off thank you again ken for for being thank here thank you uh we will link to your socials and everything in the show notes we'll keep that kickstarter in there throughout the entire run um so people can check it out honestly guys uh go check it out like this looks so fun i cannot wait to actually read the the final product with the new stuff get my hands on uh, some some reissues of the the originals, but on top of that, I mean, check us out on social media. You can find us on you know Facebook, Instagram. We technically have a TikTok. We don't do anything on it because we're not, yeah. clearly we're not funny. Um, for funny enough for TikTok, uh, <laughs> but with that being said, I mean, <clears throat> you know, link is in the bio in the show notes. Check out our web store, our Patreon which has some behind the scenes stuff on there. And yeah, so let's go ahead and close it out. So Ken, you want to go ahead and close us out? Yes. <clears throat> All right, everyone get your drinks. Uh, 
This has been the All Things Nerd Podcast. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.